Hello there. The gene circle indexes have just dropped, so let's dive on in. Hello there, welcome to my games, and we are going to have a look at the Gene Stiller Cult indexes here, the much awaited indexes. Of course, there's no point in this cost, and that's released tomorrow. But let's have a let's dive on in and have a look. Right, let's dive straight in. Here they are, the indexes, they're here, they've finally dropped. Let's jump on in. So we start straight away with Cult Ambush. Which on reading it. Oh, there's a footnote now under the... You can place a cult marker, asterisk. This looks exactly the same as before. We have Brew Brothers as well in your army, your factions. Did you so call it? Then include Asimov Charm units in your army. Even if you don't have the keyword, the Asimov Charm. Fair enough. You get more points the bigger the battle. Can't be right. Can't be a warlord. It seems exactly the same as before. Which is, it, it's a good rule. It is a good rule. You stick tanks in, not in... And, other units into just rough riders now you can have field artillery as well now just stick them in you can't have some of their main units and some of their officers which is fair enough really and they can't lead your army again fair enough right it says the marker has to be 32 millimeter diameter marker should be used for cult ambush markers interesting i wonder if they're the same size as the ambush markers that you had in previous previously hope so otherwise they're just gonna be completely redundant so interesting characters that are attached to you with this ability are not returned yeah that's okay so essentially you anyone can deep strike which is great although now nine inches i like, love dropping six inches and shooting the pants out of things that's gone but nine inches like it was before the codex and eight in ninth edition sorry so that's that's still good anything comes in reinforcements I mean, it's brilliant. You get to bring things back on, and, you, and the enemy has to either counter the markers or has to shoot everything down or charge everything all over again. But it's not full on because it can be countered at least. It's interesting because every other army has like either a big buff or a big debuff. Either getting like dice or getting orders, or you know making people to make um, making battle shock tests where cults have this. Regeneration. Regeneration seems to be a lot more prevalent in 10th edition and other editions. Let's have a look down. So, attachment, they came from below. I think it's exactly the same before. So, each time you send your army comes on a reserve into the end of your next fight phase. Weapons equipped by one for fight next fight phase. That's great. You get to fight. You get sustained one and ignores cover abilities. Now, sustained hits. You just get it, you just get it, the models get it, not the weapons, the models get it. So everything you have has a slain hits one and ignore cover. It's fantastic. It replaces um, crossfire, isn't it? That's what it is, it's the crossfire replacement. And it's just set from reinforcements, which anything come back on is, is comes on from reinforcements. Again, it was all covered before, so you had Davis engine to look at some of these. So unquestioning loyalty. When, you put, when your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase just after the enemy unit has selected targets, one single character unit from your army that was selected uh, until the end of your phase, each time a character model in your unit loses a wound, select one friendly gene seal cult within three inches of it, excluding vehicles, a character model does not lose that wound, and the selected unit suffers one mortal wound instead. So rather than having just uh, unquestioned loyalty as a normal rule, which was awesome. You've got to play one CP for it now, just to ignore one wound. That seems a bit pants compared to what it was before. Coordinated trap as was covered in the preview. It's up by two CP and two units get to add one to wound rolls when fighting one unit. Again, it's a bit of a crossfire thing. Not bad. Let's go more stratagem. So tunnel crawlers, your movement phase. Yeah, this is the same again was covered in the preview. You get set within three inches away, but you can't charge. Again, good for coming up and shooting the pants out of something or stealing objectives. It's good. One CP, you can have it. One with the darkness. Your opponent's shooting the phase when we use this. Target one genetical infantry unit, which has been selected. Effect until the end of the phase, your unit has the stealth ability and can only be selected for range attacks if it's within 12 inches. So yeah. We're going to shoot that. No, you're not. Or you are, but we get stealth. Minus one. So that's minus one tip, and you're going to attack it within 12 inches. That's pretty good. It was one of the old um, 
the stratagems are perfect ambush. Your shooting phase. Once you see your arm from army arrives from reserve this turn, has not been selected to shoot. Effect. Until the end of the phase, improve this skill and arm penetration of your weapons equipped by the models by one. That's good. Awesome. So, for one CP, when you arrive from reserve, it says from reserves, not reinforcement. So, is that going to be an issue? I don't know. I certainly will, will affect your coming from ambush, whether you can do it coming on from. Um, yeah, when you get when you get killed and re redeploy, I mean you're putting reserves. That's something I think we'll check over at the end. I just want to get through this. I want to get through every all the new good stuff first. But you get one ballistic, one ballistic skill, so hitting on threes and one uh, and APs. Even your well normal arms because they've changed them than the, the preview. But getting yeah plus one AP is is re that's really strong. Return to the shadows. End of your opponent's turn. So right end of your opponent's turn. Up to two gene cyclical battle line units. So this is only so I think it's only acolytes and um, neophytes. Or one other gene cyclical infantry unit from your army. So that's interesting the way they word that. So you have two battle line units or one other. So two battle line. Does that mean you can have one battle line and one other? I don't think so. I think it's either two battle line or one other unit from your army. Remove the target units from the battlefield and place them into strategic reserve. The target units must have deep strike ability and cannot be within the engagement range of any enemy models. So you get to take them off the battlefield and then bring them on basically. So it's at the end of your opponent's turn. You can take them off and it's your turn. In the reinforcement party movement phase, you get to bring them back on. The goal is the going into strategic reserves. So, so if they're going into strategic reserve, you can bring them on either as a strategic reserve when it comes in, or you can bring them from deep strike. That's really good. I think that's fantastic. So, I think these strategies are useful. They're not brilliant. They're very similar to what you already ha already had. They're useful. That's all I'm about. And we say about them. Um, the plus one ballistic skill, plus one armor penetration is great. I don't. Know, it seems to replacing crossfire and something just replacing the old things. Let's go these look at these enhancement, enhancements though. So, a prowling adjutant, gene steel cult models only. Once per turn, when an enemy ends a normal advance or fallback move within nine inches of the bearer, if the unit is not within gaming range, any enemy units can make a normal move up to d6. Okay, so you get some. If you if someone finishes within nine inches of you, you get to move d6 or any units. The bearer's unit with d6. Seems okay, not great. I suppose you can move away if people are going to try and charge you. Uh, inscrutable cunning. Do you need to call models only? While the bearer is leading a unit, models in this unit have the infiltrator's ability, and each time you select that unit as a target of a stratagem, roll d6, and a plus 4, you gain 1 CP. Hmm. That's quite good. So you get to put some out as an infiltrator. Imagine you could put a big block of neophytes over there or some metal. I don't want to go show me what you could do with it yet because we haven't looked at the, the, the uh, actual data sheets yet. The Tickness Planner, this was an um, enhancement that used to, that was in the old codex. Tickness was the model only again. Once per battle, just after your opponent uses a stratagem, if the bearer is on the battlefield, you can use his ability. If it does, until the end of the battle, end of the battle, so you can use it to do one, the CB cost of your opponent most pay for the user of the strategy again is increased by one. So if someone's spamming something, or you go is going to spam something, you whack on a CP. It's okay. But only if the bearer is on the battlefield. So, so you can use this ability. So once you've used it, it doesn't matter if you go off the battlefield, it's still in play, by the sounds of it, the way it's worded. That might be FAQ, I think. It does sound like once you once you use that ability, it continues on regardless, even if the character is dead or not. Gene cycle model only. So sorry, focus of adoration. Gene cycle models only. Yeah. While the bearer is leading a unit, you can target that unit with heroic intervention strategy for zero CP, and you can even and uh, and can do so even if you've already targeted a different unit with that strategy. This phase. 
So you do a heroic intervention strategy, zero CP, and you've already you knew you've already done it. That's quite interesting. Let me just know how that works. Enhancements, the raw here. Again, I'm after looking at the Imperial Guard um, index yesterday. This appears a bit squishy and a bit soft compared to what they were getting. They're getting really good buffs. It has uses. It's okay. That's that's the best way I can put that so far. Yep, the picture there he is. We we'll go straight in with aberrants. So they are movement six, toughness six, which is good. Five plus save. Okay, three wounds. Great, great. Leadership seven. I think it's normal for cult now. And only one control. That's fair enough. So they have interesting. I thought they were going to combine weapons. No more. Um, oh yeah. So they're having power weapons and improvised weapons exactly the same. Improvised weapons attacks up to five. Brilliant. Because that was pants. It's attacked really before. Strength six. Fantastic. Uh, and you get no AP. Where the heavy power weapons damage and damage two. The heavy power weapons damage three. You hit on threes as well, which is great. Strength eight. AP minus two. So the heavy power weapons are really looking good. And obviously the hype mob two get an extra attack at strength five. Really good. Feel no pain plus four. It's back. Aberrants have some durability again. Oh, brilliant. So I'm quite happy with that. That's great. Hulking bodyguards. While characters leaving this unit each time an attack targets this unit, if the strength characteristic of the attack is greater than the toughness characteristic of this unit, subtract one from the wall wound. So if you're hitting them with anything higher than their toughness, their toughness six, so they've gone up to toughness six, which is fantastic. And I didn't even notice that at first. Toughness six, why? Why are we toughness? So you're hitting them with strength seven and above, you minus one from the wound roll. Yeah, they are really trying to make aberrants uh, <laughs> a bit more a bit more durable. That's really good. So yeah, you can just hide more iron. The aberrants hide more height more heavy power weapon can be replaced with one heavy improvised weapon. The aberrants hypermorph heavy power so you can that's okay. Yeah, so you basically saying you can make you can give the the, the main guy in five weapon rather than heavy power weapon. Fair enough. Three attacks though. That's up as well as realized. Three attacks. Not two attacks. Three attacks. Great. Aberrants look super. It depends on on points. We'll fire it out tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah, you have anywhere between five and ten. And uh, aberrants are good. They look good again, don't they? Abominum to look looking now. Power stature with three attacks. I'm expecting to get small here. Yeah. Strength, but this was previewed, wasn't it? Strength 12, everyone. So he has five or saves. So he is it's exactly the same. So look, wounds five. He's got five wounds. He's a five wound aberrant. Everything else is exactly the same. But he's a leader. The chosen one. While this model is leading the unit, melee weapons equipped with this unit have sustained hits. So if you give him an aberrant unit, the aberrants are getting exploding sixes to hit. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> Regenerating G-Mass. The first set of model is destroyed. Roll D6 at the end of the phase. On a 2+, plus, set this model back up on the battlefield as, a, as a close as possible to where it was destroyed. And not within game range. Any, any it's, With its full wounds remaining. So when the Abominant's destroyed, on a 2+, plus, he's back with all his wounds. Okay, so the Abominant and the Abominant have been buffed up to the gills. Fantastic. So yeah, no walking options. He has his big power sledgehammer. Cool. One the ridge runners. I love ridge runners. Moving 12, to seven, okay. Eight wounds. It's about what you'd expect. The save has improved three plus. They have a ton of stuff. Ecclesi missile launcher. Three attacks, hitting on fours. Fair enough. No benefit, it's just a normal weapon, nothing else. Strength 9, which is great. AP minus 2. I think it's slightly worse. Damage 3. Nice and solid. I like the Achilles Missile Launcher. No one else used it. I was probably the only person in the world that used it. For <laughs> used to the cult. But it's good. It's solid. Heavy Mine and Laser. This is a heavy one, Mine, right? No, no, it's no one. So D3 attacks. Hits on 4s. It's not heavy. Okay, fair enough. Strength 2. Always hit on 4s. AP minus 3. Again, solid. Heavy Mortar, I'm... Heavy Mortar, I'm surprised it's still there. Indirect Fire, Blast. Uh, D6 plus 3, hitting on 4s. you got what? Strength 6. No AP though. Mm, 
After all, I'm not a huge fan of the Heavy Mortar since since uh, since ninth. So in combat though, the heavy, heavy stubber are really good. So welcome back to heavy stubbers. Yeah, twin linked heavy stubber. So rather than it being two heavy stubbers, it's now a twin linked heavy stubber, which means you get reborn wounds. It's basically a bit better heavy stubber. I don't think that makes a huge difference. Which strength fight has a bit of combat ability now. Oh, it has crossfire. Wow. And scout deadly demise one. Fair enough. Scouts nine. Very good scout move. Again, you expect we'd expect that to have crossfire each time this unit has a shot. Select one enemy unit that has hit by one or more attacks made by this unit this phase. At the end of the phase, each time a friendly genius cult unit makes attack against that enemy unit, improve the armor penetration effect by one. The same enemy can only be affected by this ability once per phase. So you can't hang on. So you could shoot the heavy stubbers, it always just says hit by, doesn't it? Hit by one or more attacks. So you split fire the heavy the heavy stubbers and the main weapon, and everyone else gets to pile in and get plus one AP against it. Awesome. Flare launchers gives you the smoke ability keyword. So it's one CP and you can't hit them. When you think about it, you can't hit them to get stealth and cover. Really good. Spotter. Uh, the bearers range may have plus one. Oh, so you give plus one. So you get plus one ballistic skill. Brilliant. Silverger. Each of the bearer units has a shot. It's like one of the units that has been hit by one more attack made by this bearer this phase. Until the end of that phase, each time a genius or a friendly genius cut model makes an attack against that unit, you ignore cover ability. So you really, Ridge Runners are really debuffing the enemy now, which they weren't doing before. Are they, are they moving around? They're moving about the same, I think. So yeah, it looks like. They come with a smoke launcher, and you've got to give them a spotter or a, or a survey auger. They look good, right? These are the, these are the fellas I want to look at. Acolyte hybrids. Moving the same, tough the same, five or save, one wound. I hope it's a little hope I do go two wounds, never mind. Leadership seven. I'd hope it'd be six, but never mind. And, um, and control two. Objective control too, yeah. So the auto pistol, yeah, it's, it's an auto pistol, isn't it? So demolition charges. Uh, demolition charges are pretty good. Six and range, D3 plus three. They're assault now. Hazardous, fair enough. Strength 12, AP minus two, damage two, pretty good. Hand flamers are just hand flamers. They ignore cover, they're a pistol and a torrent. So they're pretty good still. So you can, yeah, you can shoot them, it be a pistol, you can shoot them in, in engagement range. This is what I expected, and I called it, and I got it right. I wish I'd put a video out saying this. No longer is there a cutter, a rock saw, etc. It's now heavy mining tools. Why have they got no buffs, no, like, rules? Why are they not twin-linked or devastating wounds or whatnot? They're not. Base status then, that's good. AP minus two. I'd really hope they would be minus three. And damage three. They're still really good. Cult leader's weapon. So this was what was the bone sword essentially. Five attacks. That wasn't expected. Weapon skill three. Strength five. AP minus two damage one. So that you're losing damage. AP still decent. Even normal attacks is three attacks, which is what we're getting before. But we're getting AP minus two. AP's gone down. It happens. What is cool? I just noticed, but we'll go, go, we'll, we'll go up in a moment. Violent insurrectionists. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack, reroll hits the one. If the target uh, enemy is, uh, if the attack is an enemy unit within range of an objective marker, reroll the wound of ones as well. So you get to reheal ones and ones of hit and if you're an object marker we roll ones of to wound pretty good pretty good. they're solid still aren't they they're solid that's the main thing icon so they get to <laughs> in your movement phase return to d3 destroyed models if the bearer unit is in range of the objective marker you return three models instead so they can't they're not getting as much as i thought we return one model and d3 plus one so it's either d3 or three for an objective marker that's still pretty good how size you can have? Oh, you can't have squads of fifteen anymore. But yeah, 
yeah, they seem solid, don't they? They seem very, very solid. Right? Icon Ward. Again, it's just an acolyte essentially, but with better leadership. So, yeah, if you're leading, if you're leading guys, you guys get better leadership. In deep sweat, he's a leader. Yeah, he's got four attacks, strength four minus one. It's not bad. Or a pistol. Yeah, it's not a pistol. So, Nexus of Devotion. While this model is leading a unit, feel no pain ability. Yeah, plus five. That's not bad. Summon the cult. One per battle. So, only one per battle. When you have to remove a cult ambush marker because your opponent has moved too close to it, if one or more models in your army with this ability are on the battlefield, you can use this ability. If you do, instead of removing that marker, you can place it anywhere in the battlefield that is within 12 inches of a model in your army with, it, with this ability and more than 9 inches horizontally away from all enemy units. If it's not possible, then it's removed. So, the Icon Ward gives you some... I would say it's very countable. Icon Ward now gives you that bit of freedom. So, yep, you're going to take take that away, but Icon Ward says that we're just going to redeploy it instead. So, you get to go with Metamorphs, Hybrids, and Neophytes. Pretty cool. Jackals, Movement 12, brilliant. Toughness 4, fine. Save plus saves, fine. Wounds, 2 4. So, pretty much the same as what they had before. So, the Incinerator is D6 attacks. It's now. Uh, no, the only basic Strength 5. AP minus one is much on fine. Small arms fire pistols again. Two attacks. Blizzard skill four. Strength four. Again, very right same. Great launcher. Yeah, the great launchers are great now. They've been improved. Heavy stubber. Again, much improved. It, it was the same before, except now within half range you get three more shots. Great. And the minor laser. Strength twelve minus three. It's good. Twenty four inch range. Though I think has that gone down. I can't remember. I don't think it has actually. So yeah, and they get power weapons, which strength to get two attacks each. It's okay again. Strength four, strength three, and you get either minus two or zero. The scout and the ambush. They, they, so you can't deep strike these guys. You used to be able to, you can't now. I just can't deep strike. You used to be able to bring them on the ambush, but you can't. You have to scout move them now. Outrider gang. Each time you use a cult ambush ability to set up set this unit back on the battlefield in addition to no rules. All the models must be set up wholly within six inches of the battlefield edge. At least one of these models must be touching one of your cut ambush markers. That marker is then removed from the battlefield. If this can't be done, this unit cannot be set back up. It's a bit of a strange one. So they basically get these set up at the back edge of the field and happy touching the marker. That's weird. I don't know why that's even a rule. That's just strange. Demolition on each time this unit ends and normal move, you can select one enemy within six inches of the and of visibility this unit, roll 1d6 for each model in that unit and a 4 plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. That is good. So you can demolition charge people. Just to end your movement in 6 inches, that's good. The Outrider Gangs, I don't know, that that needs, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. So yeah, having the units of about 5 to 10. Wolf Hound is pretty cool. By Fagus. Um, oh, he's only toughness three. I thought he was no, you think he was toughness three before, wasn't he? Yeah, the stats are pretty much the same. Wounds three, reach seven. Auto pistol is auto pistol. So his chemical vials is now, it was a grenade before, now it's anti infantry two. Always, so you, you're wounding on twos. Critical hits on two, sorry. Hits on threes. So it's only really anti infantry. You might as well damage two, though. That's pretty good. It's gold injector, again, anti infantry. D3 damage with no AP. So let's see what is, is, is the leader. Twisted Science, while this model is leading a unit, melee weapons equipped by this unit have lethal hit. That's good. Biological Warfare, once per battle. When this model unit is selected to fight, this model can use this ability. If it does, until the end of the phase, improve the attacks and damage characteristics of the injected gold by three. Improve it by three? So you have four attacks and you're going to be doing but D3 plus three damage. Okay. So it's um, Alchemist Familiar. Once about battle, when the bearer unit is selected to fight, the bearer can use this Alchemist Familiar. If it does, to the end of the phase, melee weapons equipped by models in this unit have anti-inventory too. Okay, so you can guess you're getting... You can combine that with... Well, can you combine it with things? Not really. 
But imagine if I put that in an acolyte unit and you just, you know, or, or we see a pure strange engine, if you can, that is. Who are you putting these guys with? It's just aberrants. Aberrants, metamorphs, unit and, 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 and acolytes and neophytes. You're doing critical wounds on twos. What? Okay, he's strong. I can't reverse again, the stats are pretty good. arbitrary. So let's on aura. Voice of, voice of new troops. While the enemy unit is within 12 inches of models, subtract one from the battle shock test. That unit. If it fails the battle shock test, it suffers one mortal wound. Pretty nice. Scrum away. Enemy units that set up on the battlefield reinforcements can be set within 12 inches of this model. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Good screening. He's solid enough. Points obviously will, will, will say whether you take him or not. And he can go with acolytes, hype, metamorphs, and if it's quite standard. The rock grinder. I think this guy's going to be awesome with some of the strats you can use. But movement 12, fine. Toughness 10, good enough. Save 3, wounds 10. Little, these are slight improvements, aren't they? Fire deck of 6 as well, so that's good. Uh, Clearance incinerator. Torrent and Gloss. Cover 2d6. Attacks. Strength 6, AP minus 1, damage 1. It's fine. It's got Demolage Edition. Cash still. It's not hazardous. It wasn't before. It's Assault and Blast. It's pretty good. D6 plus 3. Blissy still plus 5. So it's hard to hit. Not heavy, so you're still going to struggle to hit with it. Strength 12. AP minus 2, damage 2. Yeah, you're making as much damage to your vehicle, but you're gonna kick some butt with that. Heavy mining laser, we've already covered. Heavy seismic coming. And we fire two, 24 inches. Four attacks. Busy go four, that's fine as before. Strength eight, AP minus two, D3 damage. Is that any different from the seismic cannon? It doesn't feel it. It really doesn't feel it. So, I don't know if that's a problem. So, those blades sustained hit, which is good. Attacks, 6 attacks, strength 10, AP2 minus, so it's pretty good. Grinding clearance, each time this model ends a charge move, select one enemy unit within engagement range of it and roll 6d6. Each 4 plus enemy suffers mortal wounds. So, rather than extra attacks, it gets mortal wounds. That's good. And, yeah, it's the rock grinder. Glide truck, again, it's similar stats. Toughness 9, what was the. This toughness 10. So it's tense, it's one less toughness. It's got heavy, so between the auto cannons, it's not kind of strength 9, AP minus 1, damage 3. It's also got demolition cash. It's a little bit damage with tanks, with its wheels. Fire it at 12. So fire support in the shooting phase, after the model has selected one enemy unit, it scores one or more. Hits against this phase. Until the end of the phase, each time a friendly model that disembarks with transport, this turn makes an attack. That targets that enemy unit, you can re-roll to wound. That's pretty good. So as you hit something, basically you're given you debuffing enemies against things that come out of your truck. Which is getting pretty good. So what can transport? Twelve units to cut infantry models. It cannot transport a patriarch anymore. How rude. Metamorphs. But these are interesting because you have Scout 6 now. I heard rumours that they were going to be infiltrators, but unfortunately not. But you get Scout move 6, so you get a, a, a free move. Hand flavours, yeah, we know what those are. So, in terms of there, they're just acolytes, and exactly the same as acolytes. Lead weapon, lead weapon is the same as before, so as, as it was with the acolytes. 5 attacks, which is great. Weapon skill, 3, turn 5, 8 minus 1, damage 2. But now they get 2 types of attack. Either a strike, where they get to do damage 2, where we get 3 attacks, or you can damage, two, damage, damage 2 and strength 5, or you can do damage 1 and strength 4, we get 5 attacks. Interesting. And they get the icon, same as the acolytes do, so either D3 or 3 models back. Savage Amalagam, whatever that is. <laughs> Amalagam, it's an Amalagam. Each time a model in this unit is destroyed by a melee attack, if that model has not fought this phase, roll d6. On a 3 plus, don't remove it from play. That destroy model can fight after the model attack is finished. So it's like they rolled ability of the hard where, they, where you could always fight if you died, but now you have to do it on a 3 plus. Why 3 plus? Why don't you just get it anywhere? But I suppose because they have to do something like that because models now come back. <laughs> or 4 plus, they can come back. Or, or come back with the cool icon. With the icon. So, aka, war gear options. Yeah, you can replace or pistol. You don't lose your combat weapons, that's good. Yeah, use a 10. A five, oh, use a 5 or 10. That's interesting. The Jackal Alphas. 
Top pistol. Um, again, he's just, a, he's just a jackal, isn't he? Sniper rifle at one attack. Hits in threes. Or twos with a heavy. Strength five, minus two, and damage three. So he's pretty good still. Priority target. Each time you this model makes an attack with its called sniper rifle, it just causes a hit until the end of the phase. Each time another GC the model from your army makes a ranged attack against that enemy unit, reroll hits of a one. A bit of a buff in. In your shooting phase, after this model's unit has a shot, if it's not within engagement range of any enemy units, that unit can make a normal move of six inches as if it were your moving phase. If it does until the end of the turn, it's not like that. So you can shoot and move, basically. It's okay. He's alright. Can he see a leader? He is a leader. He can go with that. He can put him with like the jackals, basically. The Kalamorph. Oh, he's liberate. Now, this is where he comes. Liberator. Devastating wounds. Pistol. Precision. Sustained hit D3. Oh, you gotta love the Kalamorph. 12 inch range. Six attacks. So not, they're not generating new hits. Just six attacks out right now. Hitting on twos. Strength five. Damage one. It's okay. You prefer some AP or some more damage there. You know, Worm Dragon was really, really good, but still getting devastating wounds and you're getting sustained hits. So, yeah. On six, you're getting D3 more hits. He's a lone operator, so you can't bump with anyone. A shame. I thought you could hide him somewhere and just shoot the crap out of stuff. Come with the hour, come with the hero when this model is set up using deep ability. If it's set up within three inches horizontal of a friendly. It's got a battle line unit. It can set up anywhere in the battle that's more than three inches horizontal. But it's set up within nine inches. Let's roll the cleric chart. Don't tell you how it's done. I don't understand what it means. Or it means you can set up three inches within a friendly gene skill battle unit anywhere. And then, yeah, you can't be three inches away from any other unit. But you can't charge if it's set up with nine inches of a enemy unit. But you can come on. Gunslinger, each time an enemy unit targets a friendly gene circle battle line unit within three inches of this model with range attacks after the enemy has finished making its attacks. This model can shoot as if it were your shooting phase. So you stick around in a unit, and if the enemy shoots at that unit, you shoot back with your pistol. Again, you need to be close up to it. I'm not sure how great that is. Five percent will save is always useful. He's decent. He's decent, still, isn't he? Locus, like his Locus blades. Again, it's very similar stat line. Five attacks, hitting on two, strength five, minus two, D3. Pretty good. Also, a vulnerable save number four plus. Brilliant. Can he lead? He can lead. He fights first as well. That's good. Sudden, sudden Assault. While this model is leading a unit, models in this unit have fight first ability. He's now a bar, he's now a must have. <laughs> Bodyguard. While this model is leading a unit, other character models attached to that unit have feel no pain. Yeah. Locus is. Those are pretty good abilities now. He's looking good. You can put him in Acolyte, Metamorphs, and Neophytes. Awesome. Magus. So the star is a, again the leadership is better, but they're pretty much the same. Four wounds, they're pretty much the same as, as, as everything else really. The star is a psychic attack, three attacks, hit on three, strength five, minus one, and d3 damage. Oh my word. Spiritual leader. While this model is leading a unit, they have field no pain in psychic attacks, mind control. At the start of your opponent's shooting phase, one psychic model from your arm with his ability. Selects one enemy within 12 inches visible to the Psyker. Roll D6. And one of the Psyker models suffers D3 wound. So you can both. Two to five until the end of the phase. Each type of model in the enemy makes an attack. Subtract one hit. If it's a six, the enemy can't shoot. Psyker familiar was about at the start of your opponent's shooting phase. This model can use its Psyker familiar. If it does, until the end of the phase, double the range of mind control. Then just design notes. So yeah, you can basically stop you from shooting you. Yeah. And give them feel no pain. The feel no pain thing is really good. We've covered near fights in the near fights. Sorry, they, they were covered in the um, the what do we call it? They were covered in the preview, and there's not they've changed. I'm still a fan of the Weber. Uh, heavy stubber and grenade launchers. Yeah, they've really well improved. I don't understand why you don't get shotguns anymore. That feels a bit poo, but never mind. Icon is great for these guys. We get three back or D three plus three and an objective. I don't understand though the melee weapons. 
So many weapons you get two attacks with chainsaw or one with a power fist or clock or weapon. Yet it's if you look at guard units, which they're based off, they get three with a chainsaw and two with a power weapon. I don't understand that. So you get to farm CP on a four plus if you're on an objective, you get to bring guys back. Awesome. New fights are great, don't get me wrong. The sat line is very basic. You get a huge amount of weaponry. You can put 20 of them with one, only one leader though. You get up to 20 of them. And then you can stick loads of leaders and stuff and buff them. So yeah, look at only the leader can have the chainsaw and all the power weapon. So why they've got the tax so low, I don't know. Right, Nexus. Again, quite a again, standard stat line. Again, all pistol, he's got close combat weapon with two attacks. You don't care about those. So, Battlefield Analyst. Once per turn, you can select one model or unit from your army with this ability as a target of a stratagem for zero CP, even if you've already selected a model or unit from your army as a target of that stratagem this phase. So, basically, you get to do a free stratagem. <coughs> Excuse me. With Nexus, you get to do a free stratagem, even if you've already done it before. That's awesome. Call infiltration. At the start of each player's command phase, if his model's on the battlefield, you can set one call ambush marker that is on the battlefield and move it six inches. Love the Nexus. You've got to love Nexus. Rather than free uh, crossfire token, you get to move your call ambush markers that have already deployed. <laughs> I do like that. You can attach him to stuff as well, so cool. The Patriarch, again, he's already been previewed, so I'm not going to go too much into him. He's pretty cool, but he's a bit... He's he's lost his ability to, you know, to advance and charge, which is a bit pants. Because Rikor is decent enough, we're going to make battle, make, people do make battle shop tests. And he gives people devastating wounds in melee. And he's an infiltrator, which is cool. But I'm not going to go too much into him, because he can be with, he can only go with pure strain genius. The Primus, this is another guy where you want to have a... A good shift yet. So he's scope and heal pistol, he has one attack, this skill plus two, change one d3 wounds. Hmm, okay. So he gets to get his in tox injected. So he gets two attacks as an extra attack normally. That's pretty tall. Hit on twos, strength two, but obviously any infantry plus two again, and then d3 damage. He has both bone sword, which does do, yeah, which is very similar to what the lead weapons were in the um, Acolyte, it's, we hit in twos, strength five, AP minus two, damage one. So call uh, Demagogue, whilst model is leading a unit, each time a model in this unit makes an attack, you can re-roll hit rolls. You get to re-roll hits, awesome. Decoy's Misdirection, if your army includes one or more models with this ability, as a both players have deployed their army, you select up to three genes to cut units from your army and redeploy them. When doing so, you can set these units on the strategy reserve. So I've seen this with other units, it's awesome. You get basically, Pick, your, pick units up and redeploy them afterwards. That is awesome. Pure strain gene stealers. Their leadership's poor. Why are they leadership six? They're supposed to be good with that. They're supposed to be able to go off on their own. Movement eight is fine. Toughness four is fine. Five plus saves. That's worse. These have four plus vulnerable saves. I'm going five plus vulnerable saves. That's dead down. Two wounds. Uh, they're hitting twos, four attacks, which is good. Hitting two, strength four, minus two AP, damage one. That's far enough. And the infiltrators, which is cool. And obviously, you can give them moves so you can put the patriarch with them. Swift and deadly. This unit is eligible to declare a charge and return it in advance. So they still have it. So why doesn't the patriarch? Does the patriarch get that ability if he joins the unit? That's something I'd have to check up on. Um, because that is awesome. So they still get to advance and charge, which is good. I was worried they'd lost that. That is still good that they've still got it. Have between five and ten. Awesome. Uh, the reductor, the reductor saboteur. We basically know what these this guy. The, the weapons were previewed before. This pistol, all pistols, not a pistol. Um, the demolition charges are brilliant. They're not hazardous for this per, for the saboteur because they're used to it, obviously. D six plus three. Ballistic skill two plus strength twelve minus two AP damage two. Awesome. More explosives have been. Made pants, in my opinion. 24 inches. These are sweet, awesome. This is got three fills. Strength five, AP, no AP, and damage one. This used to be for vehicles and monsters, and it's gone now. So I'm not sure how good that is. So, lone operator, fair enough. Infiltrator, fair enough. Stealth, great. Primary ready. In your shooting phase, you can select one model from your army with this ability as a target of the grenade strategy for zero CP. Provide this model 
prior to that model has not already been targeted with that strike in this phase. This can also allow you to use a grenade shotgun for a second time this phase. All right, so if you always use grenade shot, you can basically use a grenade strategy for free. All right. Plant explosive once per battle. When enemy unit ends a normal advance or fallback within 12 inches of this model, this model can use its reductus mine. If it does, roll d6 and a 2 plus enemy suffers d3 plus 3 mortal wounds. Only one model from your army with this ability can use this the same battle round. So 2 plus, you take mortal wounds. That's pretty cool. The Sanctus, so movement 6, toughness 3, yeah, final standard, only leadership plus 7. It's because of cult sniper rifle, 1 attack, whistle 3, 25, 8 minus 1 damage, pretty good. His buy dagger is an inventory plus 3 and precision, so it can target guys. Oh, he's heavy though, oh, just looking like the cult sniper rifle is also heavy, so you get hit on 2s if you say still. But back to the buy dagger, 6 attacks, that's pretty cool. Hit on 2, strength 3, 8 B minus 2, damage 1. So you get Steep Strike, he's a lone operator, you get Stealth, Infiltrator, we thought. Creeping the Shadows, this unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge and the turn it in van, so I fell back. Brilliant. Psychic Spool. At the end, Spool, I love that. Psychic Spool, at the end of the first battle round, select one enemy unit in this, to this model's prey. Each time this model makes an attack, uh, each time this model makes an attack, that targets its prey. That target has the ignore wounds and devastating wounds ability. The start of the first battle round, select one enemy unit to be this model's prey. Each time this model makes an attack okay, against that unit, you get ignore cover and devastating wounds. So yeah, you basically pick a unit to try for the Sanctus to try and rip apart. Actually, I just want to check one thing. Let's go back up to uh, the near fights. I want to see about that. And then we'll do have a look at some, we'll, we'll talk about it. Where are they gone? So, here we are. The, first of all, the, the rock grinder. So, the heavy side of the cannon, 24 inches, 4 attacks, plus 4, strength 8, minus 2, d3. I think it's only. Is, 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 is the strength that's different? So, that's another near fight. Is there any difference between the, between the heavy one and the non heavy one? Where are the near fights? Here they are. Side of the cannon, yeah. So, 24 inches. It's got the heavy thing, isn't it? This is the, so the only difference is strength 8. I think AP minus one. So yeah, only difference is strength eight rather than strength six. Heavy silent cannons, no, the silent cannons have been nerfed a bit. Oh well, never mind, never mind. So then, that brings to the end of us a quick look through the uh, indexes. So I like it, I think it's not OP, it's not OP. They are, you have the ability to bring stuff back an awful lot. And again, I think that the Aberrants and Abominant, they look so much better. Points cost is going to come into it, obviously, that, that comes out tomorrow. But they're looking good. I like the the Achilles, um, the Rock Grinders, the, the Ridge Runners. They look very good for debuffing. There's a lot of debuffing going on in this, in this army. And then a lot of hit, a lot of strike action. It is akin to you guys get things in the position, hit them hard. And then if they kill you, you get to bring them back on and you've got things like the Nexus which you get to move things around or Icon Ward where you can reposition one of your ambush markers. There's so much you know, things you can do. I, yeah. There's a few small things I don't like. Like the size of the cannons, I don't think it's as good. Uh, same with the Webbers. There's a couple of other things. I'm, like the Patriot, I think is not as good. But on the whole, everything's so much better. Oh, that's so much good. I've not so much better. I've so much better. It's so good. I think they're going to be okay in 10th. They're going to be able to fight against most armies. They're not going to be left by the wayside. Yeah, I think they're, looking, they're not looking S tier. They're looking about B tier, but that's certainly a lot better than what it could be. And I'm happy. I'm happy. The formed emperor is happy. And yeah, so we're looking good. Thank you very much for going through this with me. And obviously things could all change tomorrow when the points come out and everything could be either really good or really bad depending on how expensive things is. But thank you very much for going through this with me and I'll see you again next time. Please leave a like if you like this one or a comment if you want to talk anything Genes to the Cult or 10th edition indexes. But there, the Xenos are here. Cult are looking strong, although he's looking decent. And I'll see you again next time. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.